It has been decades since the Chimera Federation and the Skull Empire signed the Fifth Armistice. Since then, an increasingly fragile peace has been maintained in the Mist System. Waiting to be called into action, the Renegade First Squadron prepares for an eventual conflict with the Skull Empire in their VR training facility. Brave pilots Blaze Mustella and Kiro Nax undergo simulations designed by their ingenious partner, Axel Nex. Little do they know what fate has in store for them today. This, everyone, welcome again to Haller for an Hour. This is First Squadron. Uh, it is most certainly, unabashedly, basically being Star Fox. <laughs> it also seems like it is uh, a game that will exist before another game in this little series. Apparently it's going to be a series of games. Um, we, we fly around in a VR landscape, deal with enemies. It's furry. We got furry characters. It is very Star Fox. It is extremely Star Fox. In fact, even when, when I was offered the key, they basically said, yeah, we're like Star Fox. Like, Star Fox was name-dropped even by the developers in that situation, which is very funny. Uh, I've actually played on Halo for an Hour, like, two other games that were Star Fox-inspired. So let's see how this one holds up compared to those two. Because uh, one of them was kind of all right, but not great. While the other one was quite good, but it's not finished still. Uh, so let's see how this one does. Of course, before we begin, if you like the video, do think about giving a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about doing that as well. But if you really want to help out, think about coming over to Twitch. We're trying to reach partner, but we need more viewers to do it. So if you want to come by, whether to lurk or to talk, think about doing so, because it does make a big difference, and we honestly would love to have you. We also have a pretty cool Discord community if you want to check that out. I have a coffee link if you want to have directly monetize my content. And I have a merch store if you want to buy some cool stuff. In addition, we also have the Waking Drive website, which is still getting updated. It may have been earlier in the year we did it, but there have been plenty of artworks and bonus pictures coming out. We have bonus picture 3 out now, just now recently. You can see it on the side, side there. Uh, you can check it out on the website, link in the description, along with everything else. Uh, feel free if you want to, because it's fun. <laughs> but uh, with that being said... Let's go ahead and start campaign and see what we got here. Battlefield, something and something. And something and something and something. Okay. Battlefield, remember the basic of atmospheric combat with this warm up simulation. All right, let's go ahead. Press it all the missile button to fire a guided missile. I, don't, I would hope so. Oh, okay, we have. Is this, our, is this our slippy axolotl? Is that a falco? Oh, that is so, that is so fox. <laughs> okay, I have to say, I move very erratically, like maybe a little too much, but... I get it. Simple enough. It is pretty much what I expected. Hold down the charge to get a homie shot going. Our Falcon guy looks kind of like Fox, too. So one thing I'm noticing is that the lock on. Oh, this is so. This is doing so many Star Fox things. Very much Corneria from 64 vibes here. Okay, because of the way my ship moves, it's like almost impossible to hit anything without homing. I kind of have to do it. Let's see what other. So I, that's my roll. I don't have a. Okay, so it's just roll. What is that one ship white? How do I shoot a missile? Okay. Oh, they. Uh, do I have to actually hit something for it to activate? Interesting. Noted. Capital ship, alright. A little too similar. I might agree with you. I have to say, the movement is really bad. I don't like how this... Look how I move. I can't... 
I can't really aim. You notice that? Like, I can't. Like, if I want to just, like, shoot at a target, I can't. I have to use the homie chop because that's, like, the only way to actually hit things. So I don't know what they do with the movement here. It's very weird. Like, in Star Fox 64, I could still, like, manually aim at enemies, but here, I don't think I can. Wow, it's out of, out of rhythm that works. I'm using controller. It was recommended to use controller. I should know. It looks like if you're playing, I don't know what it would require to. Here, Max survives. Hooray! Yeah, I don't know why they made it so the ship just like. You know, like. Hey, hold on a second. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna do one thing that will help me a little bit. That. Oh wait, no. No wait, that's wrong. I did went the other way, actually. <laughs> I never remember. Oh, aim sensitivity. I wonder if I should turn that down. Should I turn that down? What does it feel like if I turn it down? That does not fix that. Okay. I like how uh, our fox equivalent is basically talking talking simlish. <laughs> if you know this. Ow. I really wish I could aim towards a direction, that'd be great. Like, I like the homing shot in 64, but I didn't use exclusively the homing shot. I also did manual shots too. I wasn't asking for help, but thank you. Okay, we just saved Falco. Much like you saved Falco. It's so... It is just copying everything, pretty much, isn't it? To a barrel roll. <laughs> Call an air ladder roll. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna do that. You're gonna do that. You're gonna do that. Actually, that's not a barrel roll. That's an area area roll. It's like yeah. I mean yeah, it is. But we're doing that, are we? <laughs> we're doing that. We're doing that. We're gonna do the well actually, huh? Oh, by the way, there's no boost. It just did that automatically. We need. No option for dead zones? Uh. Aim since it did nothing, so. No, no, there's no option for dead zones. Whoops, I actually shot my missiles. Oh, whatever. Oh, okay. See why it's called the Wasp. That's it? That didn't last very long. Yeah, this, um, it, it, besides the really janky-ass movement, and thus janky-ass movement, aiming, it controls fine, but... I mean, it is, it is a little, I mean, I, I'm down for a Star Fox inspired game, but like, this doesn't feel like, it just feels like Star Fox. <laughs> like, Star Fox, but I was good. 
nothing in particular unique about it. I mean, I guess we're in a simulation environment, so you didn't have to draw textures. Space saving, I suppose. The music is all, all right, but not great, in my opinion. I don't like the fact that I can't manually aim, because, like, unless something's in more or less the state of the screen, I can't manually aim at it. And the fact that I can't even- I can't boost or slow down, by the way, that, that's controlled entirely by the game. Okay. Did, did I take no damage across the- chase the way through that door? Alright. So wasn't of Star Fox left the because no one gave credit to his songs. What do you mean? That he never got credit properly? Is that right? Actually fucked up quite hard there. Okay, I think I see the movement pattern. I see it stay on the right more or less. It's uh, kind of hard hit spots. I, it's not even homing on them. There, I got it. Now there's a bigger target at least. The homie chat doesn't always, like, walk on for some reason. There. It took longer than it should have because the homie chat wasn't homing. Oh, yeah. Did you go through whole OST? Oh, shit. Oh, oh, why was there an elite yeah. from Halo? Or, I'm sorry, Sangeli. Oh, bone and nut. I really like Blaze's, like, Simlish. <laughs> Are being introduced. I figured. One, two, two, Lena, me now, me. Okay. Yeah, that's not supposed to happen, probably. Barrel will attack asset. Nope. 
They can't get us out. We're stuck in the simulation. It's breaking. Yeah, I've seen this storyline before, but fair enough. Die in the simulation, you die in real life. Oh, so why is there random? The synth waves. The, I don't know why, but the synth waves kind of bothers me. Like this is the fact there's synth waves effect. Like the synth wave sun. It feels over. Don't, does everybody else agree with me when I say that thing's overused? Oh shit. Okay. Damn, I really can't move very fast. Constantly run over. Vaporwave, yeah. The vaporwave effect, like... I feel like it's getting kind of overdone at this point, I don't know. It also just feels very random, like, here's a Star Fox game, also Vaporwave. Malaria, malaria hall. <laughs> I'm sorry, Blaze, why did you talk about malaria? <laughs> I love this simlish. He just went, so, malo malaria, huh? I'm like, malaria, huh? Yeah, malaria, huh? Huh, malaria, right? <laughs> malaria causes glitch, I'm sure. Uh. <laughs> I like how the glitchy effect means I don't know what the fuck's going on sometimes. Like those fell, but oh, we're gonna change the path. Okay, where are we going? Something about Perry Green. Tashiker. Tacoon? Tacoon? Tacoon ass place? I love it. I don't like the vaporwave look, said Yamhead. I mean, I don't hate it, I just feel like it's overdone. It became a cool thing, so everybody started doing it. I don't really know why. It's also really hard to tell if I'm actually impacting with my bulls sometimes. Well, I'm doing really good, actually. So we're kind of replaying the same levels, but like we're glitching through them now, basically. lot to say about this game. It's fine. Okay, we got it. I fought this one? I feel like I fought this one. Weak points keep changing. That's problematic because I lock. Sometimes I lock onto the wrong one, man.
formulaic pattern though, not too scary. I just realized that Direct Fire is probably more yeah, that's better, that's better, that's absolutely better. Sometimes just direct fire is the preferable way. I'm very low health, I just realized. Oh shit. That was that was that was like a Star Fox explosion sound <laughs> for once. Beats the Aina, we know mean a mean. This is good on bosses. Yeah, true. The missiles are kind of weird though, because if they don't hit the target, I think they just fly away and never blow up. <laughs> Normally in Star Fox, your bomb goes forward a little bit and then it just blows up in the air. Which is actually preferable. Or unless it, of course, glides aside. Huh? Alright. I should do the actual aerial aerial air roll or whatever it's called. I, I don't think I can fight. I just gotta be this. Kiro's gotta do it, you know. The stout. Wait, hold on. Is he like a stout? What is he? What is Kiro? What are we? We're definitely mustelids, but I don't know which one. Like, thinking about it, you know? Oh, okay. We're a ferret. What is- is Kiro also a ferret? Is he just an edgy ferret? Oh, it's a mantis! A prey mantis destroyed- okay, it's the- General Grillis! General Grillis! I knew it! Yeah, see what I mean? I missed with the missile, so I just didn't hit. Do you see the problem? Like, it just went off to nowhere land. You're not very hard, General Grillis. Do you think it was a cat? I don't know if I agree with that. General Grillis! Must stop him. I'm not gonna hit him. Yes. It's a chase and hit situation. Okay, and can do. Oops, wrong button. Okay, my missiles are now immediately exploding for some reason, rather than exploding on him. Is this doing anything? He's flashing, but I don't know if I'm actually doing anything. Oh, the worm's back. It's not ideal. Gonna cause problems while I do other things. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, let me take all your power ups. My guess is that, yeah, I guess I was supposed to save the missiles. Hey, what's next? Core core. Here's a free of building a chow. Say about a chow. We're talking about dogs now. <laughs> I want to break down this simlish. Tuki tuki. What? 
Tchouki tchouki I'm back! Haha! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Bitch, I guess. So you're just gonna float around while I uh, attempt to shoot him in the face? Okay. And this. If the only threat's the other ship, I can just keep moving. It's probably fine. It's kinda lame. He's just using another boss as a shield ish. Also, it's really hard to hit him in the head. Not possible, my dear. Wait, can I still. Wait, can I still destroy this? Did I destroy the boss? I figured it was just a bit. I, I figured this thing was just invincible, but I'm noticing I could target it, so maybe I can. Hard to tell, honestly. I assume I'm not doing anything to it, honestly. I'll just do the homing shots on his head, it's the easiest way to hit him. Ow. Very exciting boss fight where I'm a big like a boss I already fought is is acting as a shield while the other boss menacingly dances around. I just hope that I just have to wait for like one to be out of the way of the other, I guess. Alright, blow up your head, now what? You don't have a head now, what now? Oh, okay. Oh no, it's final form. Ow. Ow. Okay, I see. As long as I'm dangled from him, I don't think he can hit me. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So I need to stay up high. And never be in front of him, basically. Just stay up high because the low. When he does horizontal slash, it hits basically the entire bomb map of the screen. And we'll just we'll just dance back and forth. This works. You cannot defeat me, but it's my world now. Um, you're very boring. Well, if you guys are gonna talk, I'm just gonna shoot you a bit. If it, if it missiles, nice. That's cheating. I love it. <laughs> Axe is like, I'm gonna fucking cheat. I don't give a shit. My emperor, I failed you. I know that line. <laughs> I know that line. <laughs> I played enough Star Fox 64. I can I can basically quote not only lines but the emotions behind them at this point. Pitch, I'm admin. Very good message. I will approve it since there's apparently no staff here to allow that. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Not sure what happens when you destroy it, but I'm pretty sure you'll get out of your brain not fried. Maybe. Maybe.
Wait, Gary Bob, Chuter Yamina Wasina. Plays gives some very motivational simblish, like, don't worry, we won't die. That's two people. How many people are logged in? I guess just us, us two, okay. Game by Pedro Silva. Silva Raptor? I think I know Silva Raptor. At least I think I've heard the name. Yeah, yeah, I guess he was outside the simulation, fair enough. Who's. Somebody look up Silva Raptor for me, if you don't mind. If they are a furry, I think I know who they are. The end. Now, actually, hold that thought. Oh, that's a weird frame to hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to look them up myself, actually, too. Silva Raptor, Pedro Silva. I feel like I know you. Let's see. Fighter of Raptor card. No, no, it's a different. It's a different Silva Raptor. It is not the same Silva Raptor I know. Interesting, there's another person named that, though. All right. I mean, it's fine. Silver Raptor gives me a truck. <laughs> well, it's Silv ah, not Silver. So. Did I just cause a black screen because I paused the game for a second? Alright, well. Unlock difficulty level Kiro. Now you can change between difficulty levels, okay? So, what is up with the, uh... I see, I see. So there's like, oh, okay, oh, I see. Short game, you see the check marks? I was wondering what those were about. I thought they were, like, maybe involving bonus objectives. No, 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 no. The, how this works is that the first difficulty level gives you a check mark. That's Blaze difficulty. The second difficulty level is Kiro. That'll give me the second check mark. And then once I beat the game on that difficulty, it looks like we'll unlock a third one. And then we can play the game on the third difficulty. So, um, so that's how they pad out the game. <laughs> so sorry to be blunt, but it is true. Uh, that's a pretty short game, but the way they uh, extend it is by having unlockable difficulty levels. Let's, I guess I could try out the Battlefield one on this difficulty. I don't know how different it'll be, but I guess I'll replace the other ship, I suppose. That's fair. Dario, you have a wanna be my malaki malam and water. Wanna be my malakali ladly what? What was that about molecular levels? <laughs> Is the dialogue different? Are the enemies different? What's harder? It's probably just the same stages with like damage buffs or something. I'm not sure. I mean, it just feels like the same stage. I did take more damage. I, I'm very hurt despite, I think I only got hit once, but... Um, so damage of the enemies is up, for sure. I'll probably die if I... If I were to play this, I'd probably die some. I assume that means restart stage. 
I don't know. Yeah, I hit like three. Okay, well. Oh, if I got hit two, three times, I didn't really take that much damage overall. I wasn't. Honestly, it's kind of hard to tell when I take damage sometimes, so. I'll try to actually aim with the missiles, but it's really hard. There. I did less damage than I was hoping. I definitely, de I definitely am taking more damage. I just deserve that. Eh. Dialogue is the same. I'm taking more damage. I'm playing a different ship. That's it, really. That is a summary of the situation. Oh, we're... We're not even switching characters, so I thought, like, maybe... Okay, is, is it gonna be, like... You know who, who just passed us? Our own ship passed us. So I thought I thought we were switching roles between, uh, what's-his-name and Kiro and Blaze. So I thought since we were playing Kiro's ship, that means that Blaze would be our assist. But it looks like it's actually still Kiro. That's kind of lame. So basically, during the first difficulty, we were playing as Blaze and Kiro was flying around here and there. Kiro is still flying around here and there as we play as Kiro. So it's not even like changing it up. We're like, okay, but now like they're switching roles and they're doing different things. No. No, it's literally just there's a clone of Kiro now. <laughs> Lena, call Lena. Uh, all right. So it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's... I think I can safely say this is kind of a lazy, uh, hard mode. It's like, yeah, the enemies do more damage and that's it, really. Which is honestly my least way my least favorite way of I like I I don't I, I like hard modes in games, but only if they do something interesting, right? If all they do Don't worry, Kiro, I'll save you as Kiro. Don't worry, Kiro, Kiro's to the rescue. Yeah, hard modes where all the difference is is just you take more damage. Lame. I don't think those hard modes are very fun. You wanna keep going? Well, I was actually gonna stop, but then uh, one of you was like, "You should check it out," and I was like, "Yeah, I should probably." Like to be fair, I should. Hard modes can be fun in video games. It just depends on what's done with them. Like, I love it when a hard mode adds like a new mechanic. Like, it becomes more difficult because there's a new mechanic, and it's like, "Oh, cool! There's a new mechanic, and I have to use this new mechanic." It's actually quite interesting, you know. Showing me. This is just this. This isn't really changing much out. Out so. I mean, these enemies could totally fuck me up now, but is that really very interesting? Nah, not really. <laughs> yeah, if, if all you did with your hard mode is you change, like, damage values and HP values, that's boring, in my opinion. What you want to do with a hard mode is, generally, you want to affect the enemy's AI or change how the enemy works or change, like, the arrangement of enemies or what enemies you encounter where. Or make it so there is a new mechanic you got to interrupt interact with. Those are the hard modes I like. But the hard modes where all you're doing is just changing some values. Oh, this enemy has more health. Oh, you have less health. Oh, this, this enemy does more damage. Oh, you do less damage. That's boring in my opinion. And I'd like to point out that this game is short. I understand. Listen, I'm not, I'm not judging the hell out of the game for being short. It's hard to make a Star Fox-like game. So, like, I'm sure that making these six levels still took a while. Right? So I get why it's a shorter game. It's not... I'm not trying to be super mean about that. I do have to say, these wireframe graphics, though, I'm sure that saved development time to some degree. 
it's not like we were going through really unique environments where every single one of them was completely different. Like, you know, Star Fox 64 and such have. Um, so I feel like that definitely saved the development time a bit. So I, I would have liked it if there was more levels. Um, but as it stands, I mean, look at this. It, it expects you to beat the game three times on increasingly difficult levels of difficulty. I That is how this game extends its runtime. And uh, if all that, I mean, if all that's different is just, oh, I'm going to die faster and faster with each difficulty, like, uh, clearly we unlock a third difficulty. We see that little lock icon. Third difficulty will be, well, we'll probably play as the Axolotl character, so it'll be Axel difficulty, which will probably be even harder. Maybe I'll be able to, maybe it's even one hit kill mode, I don't know. Uh, but, like, yeah, that's, that's kind of a lame way to pad your game, you know? Like, the developer acknowledged that a, a single playthrough is very short, so they, they had to think of a way to, like, extend the gameplay. I think they chose kind of a poor way of doing it, though. This is a very lazy way to extend your gameplay. It's okay to have a short game, though. I would have preferred it just to end, rather than unlock these difficulty levels. It, I mean, if it was short, that's... this Short is not necessarily bad. It depends on your price point, though. Let's take a look at the price point, because I actually would like to look that up again. I do not remember what the cost of this game is on Steam. Let's take a look. Uh, okay, so $7 USD. That's a little bit high for the amount of content here. It doesn't really offend me. I feel like more, I feel like, you know, I feel like if this game was just five bucks, then I'd be okay with that. It's, there's nothing really wrong here. It's, but I have to say, it doesn't have its own identity. This is just Star Fox, but we're in wireframe mode. Which basically means it's like Star Fox, but there's less of its own personality there. It, it's it, Like, if it did something different with the formula, like, it has its own characters, I guess, that speak in Simlish. But having wireframe cyberspace environments with a vaporwave, wave, vaporwave sun, that doesn't really add a lot of unique personality. This just feels like a more generic-fied Star Fox, you know? It's like Star Fox, but without the interesting levels. Now they're just wireframe. Because now the enemies are just wireframe, you know? It, it, it's fine. But I, I guess, you know what? This, this might sound really damning. I'm not trying to be super mean here, but I don't understand why this exists in this state. It's competent, like, overall. Like, I don't like the ship movement. It makes it pretty much impossible to do free aiming, but... I, I'd say that it's a competent mechanically game, but it feels like feels like a framework. Much like how the cyberspace is made up of wireframe, this feels like a framework to develop a game on, not something to sell for money as it is. I mean, I guess you could say it, sell for a few bucks, but I do think it's slightly too expensive for what it gives you. It just it just feels like it's it's a it's a beta to something else, you know? And I think that actually applies well because if you look at Raptor Claw, Claw which was developer and publisher for this, there's First Squadron Phoenix. I'll show this to you guys. They have a page for this. I noticed this. Uh, they have an estimated release of 2025 for this. And uh, here. So First Squadron Phoenix. Which still has the Vaporwave thing. Still has the wireframe. But it looks like it's doing a bit more. Or wants to do a bit more. So like... There's not much to it right now, but... Yeah, they already have a plan to make this game, too. So... Like I says, the first quarter is back. It also wants to be a roguelike, which is interesting. But, uh, like, that's a wireframe video, but then you got, like... Okay, that's an actual environment, like... You know, that's a, that's a place. I see the vaporwave still in effect, but it's like, this is a place... This is not a place, but that was a place. So, like, I, I feel like... I don't know why this has a wireframe look still. I feel like... I feel like First Squadron is sort of like a, a, a like a test game before they develop Phoenix. I'm not really sure, though. All I know is that this doesn't have any of its own personality. The only personality it has is basically just Star Fox. And not, not a homage to Star Fox, just Star Fox. It really is... Only a Star Fox personality and a bunch of wireframe. 
It just feels so nothing to me, right? It's competently playable, but it just doesn't... It doesn't make me feel anything, you know? I'm very numb to this game. For the description, it's still a virtual simulation thing. Oh, fair enough. I wish they had done their own thing. They have their own characters. I think the characters are fine. They're obvious... I mean, they're obvious... They're obvious Fox, Slippy, and Falco uh, counterparts. But I don't mind them. They're different animals. That's kind of neat. I, I feel like they could have done something with that, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just, just... It feels off, doesn't it? it, it I, did, I do have to say, it plays fine, so if you do want a little bit of a Star Fox experience, don't mind dropping down a few bucks for a short game like this. You could do worse. But that was First Squadron. I was hoping it would make me feel a little bit more than this, but it didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it's fine, and that's it, it's completely competent, but... That's all I really have to feel about it. It's Star Fox, with nothing to give it a, a distinct identity of its own. <laughs>